Okay, hello everybody. So you can see that we are studying a brand new set of modules where we will focus on the partial differential equations. So far, what you've been exposed to was ODE, Ordinary Differential Equations. And at the very beginning um, of these sets of modules, I discussed the differences between ODE, PDE, and etc. So I kind of recommend you to go and visit those uh, videos because I'm not going to rehash the same thing, okay? But rather what I will do is I'll go ahead from the starting with the partial differential equations, okay? The first thing I want to highlight is just like the ODE, very similar to ODE, which is ordinary differential equations, PDE can be linear or nonlinear, okay? Can be linear or nonlinear. And the way that we quantify whether a PDE is linear is that I look at the independent variable, okay? And as you know, as this is a partial differential equation, I have multiple independent variables, not just single, okay? Here's what the linear uh, PDE looks like. So I have these independent variables, plural, and their derivatives appear as the first order, okay? So in my equation, in my PDE, if the independent variables and their derivatives appear as the first order, I call this a linear, right? So it's kind of similar to all these from that angle, right? But obviously PDE is a little bit more complicated. So what I will do is I'll go ahead and write a second order, you know, because that's kind of common, second order linear PDE, which I will, uh, upcoming segments will talk about multiple second order linear uh, PDEs, okay? But here is how we write it. A del square u del x square plus b del square u del x del y plus c del square u del y square plus d del u del x plus e del u del y plus f times u will be equal to g. Okay, so I was a bit generic with A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So I'll talk about this in a minute. But let's look at this, the form of it. So you can see that the first is, I have myself, uh, you know, with respect to one of the independent variables, I have X and Y in this particular case. You can clearly see the dependent variable is U, right? It's everywhere. Um, so I take the second order uh, derivative, or rather partial, over here and over here. I get still second order, but I have del X, del Y this time. Also the first orders plus, just like the, the ODE. So it's not that different, it's a little bit more complicated though, okay? And if I'm looking at the linear equation, so these A, B, and I, I will go all the way to G, they are either constants, some of the real numbers, or they are a function of X, Y. That will be fine for linear, okay? It can be X, it can be Y, or it can be both, okay? And well, very similar to the ODEs, if I have, uh, let's write the more general case, if g x on y is equal to zero, what did I call in the ODE case? If right hand side is zero, I say homogeneous, yep. Same thing over here exists as well, right? And obviously you know that the goal is to find a solution and the solution of a PDE is a function and at the end of the day, the goal is to find this u x comma y, right? From this uh, equation that we're looking at. And obviously, I will need to find this uh, x comma, you know, this that satisfies this equation. And what I will obtain is the solution will be in the xy plane because I have those as the independent variables. Another thing is in the ODEs, we were focusing on finding the general solution. Okay, so that was fairly okay. Uh, but for PDEs, that's really not the goal. The goal is not to obtain the general solution. Okay, um, my my goal is to actually go ahead and find the particular solution, okay, particular solution. The particular solution mean that I will have some boundary value, um, and this is going to call boundary value problem. I'll talk about these. And then we will be able to go ahead and solve for a particular solution. It will be actually easier to find the particular solution rather than the general solution, all right? But that's not the motivation behind why do we do the particular solution. The motivation is that in physics, we mostly encounter particular solution, which has a boundary value problems, and the solution is the particular solution. Those are the basic definitions. So now I want to go one step ahead and discuss 
how can I go from here to here? That is actually the whole point of what I'm covering, right? I'm here, I know this equation, my goal is to find the solution. Okay, actually let's go ahead and write this solution. So I will talk about something called separation of variables. We, you heard it, I covered it myself too. Separation of variables. It's a little bit different than the ODEs, okay? In ODE, we move things, uh, you know, one side was depending on one variable, the other one was, the other side was depending on the other variable, we were taking the integral. Um, that's a bit different than what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is, I'm looking at the solution, u, x, comma, y is my solution, right? So what I'm saying is, is it possible to separate into this? And the answer is sometimes, it will be no, I cannot, right? So this is not a done deal, just want to highlight. So this is, I'm separating this to x of x plus y of y, right? x is function, y is function, these are the variables. Um, so I'll give you an example. If this is x squared plus y squared, no, you cannot do it, right? You cannot multiply these, uh, you know, so you cannot use what I'm talking about here. So this is only a particular case. The advantage in here is I can use the separation of variables and I can reduce the PDE into two ODEs, right? So, and the good thing about this is I have already covered, well, you know, maybe 50 videos for ODEs. So then you, you're exposed to it, you're familiar with it, and it should be not too different from what I've been discussing before, okay? So let me explain. And I wanna also highlight that um, in some cases what will happen is you will be able to separate this in this manner, and I will also go ahead and say that I said that it may be reduced to two ODEs, right? Please underline the word may over there. It is not, a, it's not a certain. In some cases I can separate them, but I do not get ODEs, two ODEs. Just want you to know, okay? This is more like special cases, special case is the one I will be able to solve, okay? And I'm gonna assume that that is how it is. It is gonna be able to solve, all right. So let's look at del u del x from here. So you can see here, when you look at the right hand side, when I take the derivative, so the y, when I take the partial, you will see that the y is constant like a number because it's not the parameter that I'm dealing with. So that's gonna stay right there and I'm take, gonna take the derivative of this now, okay? So it will reduce the regular derivative of the partial. So I will get that as an example. And if I have del u, del y, uh, reverse, right? x, y prime. If I have del square u, del x square, then I will have x double prime, right? Because it's the second derivative. And y is a constant as far as this particular partial is concerned. And I have the other one as well. That's right, actually. Del square u, del y square will be I will have myself x, y, double prime over here, okay? So then what I will do is I'll go back up here, looking at the equation, and you can appreciate why I cannot solve it sometimes. It's fairly complicated, right? Like look at this, you know, if I have all these terms over here, it's quite unlikely that I'm gonna get two of these, right? Um, but let me go ahead and solve a case where we can do this by using this approach, okay? And the equation, uh, or rather the partial differential equation that I'm trying to solve over here is this, let's say. And you can see that it's fairly uh, simpler compared to what I have been discussing over here, the general version of the second order linear PDE, right? So many of the terms are zero, so I can find it, all right? Uh, this is linear, you can clearly see that. Um, and I will try to find the solution by using u x comma y is equal to just like what I said up there x x y y okay so I already covered this over here so you can see I will simply use this and plug it in here the u del y is right here I'm just gonna plug it in okay and this is uh, not a big deal from you know looking at the exams and also you typically accomplish this no problem for x y prime right so now the goal is the separation of variables. The goal is to separate x to the one side, y to the other side. In order to accomplish that, I'm looking at it. I, um, you know, if I divide, let's, um, I'll tell you in a minute. If I divide by 4xy, let's see what happens to this equation, both sides obviously. I will get x double prime divided by y will cancel, so I'll get 4x, okay, is equal to. And if I divide by 4xy, uh, 4x's will cancel, I will get myself y prime by y. So now, do you see what is happening over here? It is kind of resembling what I had in the ODEs. This side is only a function of y, this side is only a function of x. The thing that is important in here, and this will come in handy, we will use this for the rest of the PDE modules, 
this is a function of x only, this is a function of y only. How can they be equal to each other? If this is one of us a function of x, this is a function of y. They can only be equal to each other if these two is equal to another constant. And just hang on a second, I'll explain why this um, weird lambda and why there's a negative momentarily. But this is a constant value and this shouldn't be a function of x or y. It cannot be. If it is only a function of x, then this is what's happening in here. This is a function of y, this is a function of x. It can happen. So what's happening is, is this is only a function of x, this is only a function of y, this has to be a number, okay? And this is called the separation constant. This is called the separation constant, and it is extremely important in determining my solution. And this lambda, there's a negative, um, because you will see, uh, you know, when I try to start solving it here, when I move this negative to that side, it's going to look positive, that's the reason, okay? just by convenience, so I can have a plus sign instead of a negative sign. And I will analyze this here with you today, so that you can understand uh, the implications of having a positive, negative, or zero. So let's write the two equations. I said it will be divided into two equations. Let's write it this way. x double prime plus, this is the reason why I have a negative in front of it, for lambda x is equal to zero. That's the first ODE. And the second one is I am simply going ahead and writing this and that, right? Now I'm going to write this. So if I write that, I will get y prime plus lambda y is equal to 0, okay? This guy, that can be a positive, that can be a negative, that can be a 0. So those are the three options that I see because this, this is a real number, this is not imaginary, okay? So I'll analyze each case separately. So I'll do one by one. So let's start off with the first case. And the easiest case, let's say that in this particular case, lambda is 0. It turns out to be 0. So in that, looking at the very first equation, I will have x double prime is equal to 0. And I will get y prime is equal to 0. If I go out and solve this, which is fairly manageable, I will get my x to be c1 plus c2x, right? How about this? I'm going to get y is equal to c3. Be careful about these constants. I'm using different ones as a continuous, okay? And the solution, if I go back up here, right, the goal was to find this solution. And the solution is multiplication of these two functions. So then in this particular, the first case, I will get myself u will be equal to x of x times y of y. And then if I multiply this, you will see c1 plus c2x times c3. So this will give me c1, c3 plus c2, c3x. I think you see what is coming over here. I'm going to call this a1, another uh, constant, I'm going to call this b1. So you see, when all, all said and done, my u will be a1 plus b1x. So this is the solution, if this separation constant was 0. Let's look at the second case, and the second case, let's say that this lambda is less than 0. Okay? And in order to highlight this, I did this in the eigenfunction, eigenvalue section, uh, I did this lambda is equal to minus alpha square, right? Because alpha square is a positive value. As I, you know, this is for sure will be a negative value. So yeah, I'm going to have x double prime minus 4 alpha square x will be equal to 0. That will be the first equation. And the second equation will be y prime minus alpha square y is equal to 0. So I'm simply going ahead and replacing this lambda by this minus alpha square. That's all I did. I'm going to go ahead and solve these two equations one by one. Let's start with the first one um, is equal to zero. If I use the ancillary equation from the previous topics, m squared minus 4 alpha squared is equal to zero. So you can see m is equal to plus minus 2 alpha, right? That's what the solution will be. So then if I write it, it's going to look like this c4 because I use c1, 2, 3 in the previous uh, case. So I'm going to start with c4 e to the 2 alpha x plus c5 e to the minus 2 alpha x. Let's look at the y. My ancillary form will be m minus alpha square. That's what uh, my ancillary equation is. So obviously m is equal to alpha square. Then my y will be c6e well, alpha square y, right? That's what it is. Don't, don't, don't get confused about these independent variables. It's going to get tricky sometimes. You know, you kind of memorized already with ODs that this is supposed to be x and this is y. Careful, careful. At the end of the day, it will be x, y, right? Multiplication of this will be my solution. And that's my whole point why I'm doing this. So it's going to be c4 e to the, where is it up there? 2 alpha x plus c5 e to the minus 2 alpha x 
and then I will multiply this by c6 e to the alpha square y. And when all said and done, I'm not going to show the details because it's getting a little bit long, but c4 times c6, I'm going to call this, um, you know, a2. And it's going to be e to the alpha square y plus 2 alpha x. Do you see that? I'm simply, when you, I multiply this and that, it will be a summation sign. Plus b2 times e to the alpha square y minus 2 alpha x. That will be my solution. And now, I want to make a point. Look at this solution. This is a solution to the PDE. This is a solution to the PDE. They look quite different, don't they? So the separation constant is extremely important. I have one more to go. And that the third one is going to be, obviously, then I'm going to say this lambda is larger than zero. So my lambda will be alpha square in this particular case. x double prime plus 4 alpha square x is equal to zero. And I will have y prime plus alpha square y is equal to zero. And if I look at the x, I'm taking a shortcut, m square plus 4 alpha square is equal to 0, ancillary form, I got my m12 is equal to plus minus 2 alpha i. And if you remember from the previous chapter, we write this this way, I, I use c6 already, right up there, let's double check, yeah, c6, so it's going to be c7 cosine of 2 alpha x plus c8 of sine 2 alpha x. And I do the same with y, it's going to be m plus alpha square is equal to 0, m is equal to, well, minus alpha square, clearly, right? And I will have my y to be c9, 8, 7, 8, 9, e to the minus alpha square y. So then my u, x, y, will be equal to x, x, y, y, and now we get the next page. So then I need to multiply these two, so you will get c7 cosine 2 alpha x plus c8 sine 2 alpha x, and then I have to multiply this by c9 e to the minus alpha square y. And when all said and done, I will get my u x y to be, it's a3, that's what I used, e to the minus alpha square y cosine of 2 alpha x plus b3 e to the minus alpha square y, this time around sine 2 alpha x. Look at this, look at this and look at that. So you can see it's very different depending on my critical constant. That's the point that I wanted to make. Okay, this has been a long segment. I was trying to finish everything, but I couldn't. I'll have the part two coming up soon. Thank you for watching this.